Joining us now from Washington is the senior senator from Arizona and 2008 GOP presidential nominee, Senator John McCain. And Senator, it's so great to see you again on Newsmax TV. Joining us now from Washington is the senior senator from Arizona and 2008 GOP presidential nominee, Senator John McCain. And Senator, it's so great to see you again on Newsmax TV. Thank you. President Obama today wraps up his three-day bus trip promoting his American Jobs Act. You have blasted the bus tour saying the president is clearly campaigning for 2012. Where do you draw the line between campaigning and acting as president of the United States? Well, over the years, the line has been pushed further and further in the direction of taxpayers' money. Um, but this is really quite, uh, I think, the most extreme that I have observed. And I'm not uh, excusing what previous presidents, both Republican and Democrats, but this is an out-and-out -out campaign rally kind of tour that cannot be described in any other way. And uh, it gives really the president a very unfair advantage over other candidates who are seeking public office because they have to pay their bills. And uh, look, there's been a lot of talk about, about the bus, uh, but the fact is that why in the world should the taxpayers have to pay for somebody's bus? I can go out tomorrow and lease one that's very nice and very pleasant. I did it on numerous occasions. But the important thing about this is that the president's rhetoric level is at uh, October 2012 levels rather than uh, October 2011. And the whole thing is unfortunate and does not contribute to an environment where we could sit down and work together here in Washington. President Obama has been in office now more than 1,000 days. In your view, did his brand of hope and change fail? Well, certainly the, his economic plans have failed. Uh, when they passed the first stimulus bill, and now, of course, as you know, they're trying to pass stimulus two, they predicted uh, millions of jobs would be created, that the maximum unemployment would be 8%, uh, that, um, you know, that we'd be on the path to recovery. In fact, I believe it was last summer, they called it the, the summer of recovery. That obviously hasn't been the case. And so what we are urging the president, instead of trying the same old tax, spend, and borrow, that they look at some of our proposals, which would, we think, uh, one, get our fiscal house in order, and two, create jobs throughout this country. You and Senator Rand Paul have introduced Senate Republicans' jobs plan. Why is this plan better for America than President Obama's? And given the likelihood that it won't pass the Senate, where do you see room for compromise with Senate Democrats? Well, first of all, our, our plan uh, calls for uh, tax cuts and simplification of the tax code. It calls, frankly, for a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. Give the President of the United States a line item veto, meaning he could veto out those particular pork barrel and earmark projects which seem to uh, be uh, present throughout the appropriations bills. Uh, give a moratorium on the new federal regulations. If you talk to business people today, they say that they are not hiring and investing, even those that have money, because of the uncertainty of their future. We need to give them some certainty that they will have a playing field that will allow them to hire and uh, invest. That's what this whole package is all about. And what the president's package is, of course, spend more, tax more, borrow more. And here we are with $14 trillion in debt, another $1.3 trillion this year, and, uh, and no end in sight. So um, we uh, would be glad to sit down with the president, for example, if we cut the corporate tax from 35 to 25 and at the same time eliminated all of the loopholes and special deals for special interest that have been cut throughout the years here in Congress in favor of the special interest in the tax code, I think it would restore a great deal of confidence. The problem with America today is that there is not confidence which would then cause people to go out there and take risks and invest and hire. And we've got to turn that around, and the present stimulus, too, certainly doesn't do that. 
President Obama in a speech Tuesday said the Republicans' plan boils down to this, quote, dirtier air, dirtier water, less people with health insurance. Do these remarks anger you? Uh, it's a bit frustrating to hear the president talk such nonsense. Um, look, I respect the president's proposals. I don't agree with them because they're a fundamental philosophical difference. The president obviously believes that the government creates jobs. We believe that businesses create jobs, so therefore we should help businesses uh, do that, uh, have the government assist them. And so, but look, I respect the president's views, and I wish he'd be a little more respectful of ours, but look, he's in full campaign mode, and, uh, and, the, and it is what it is, and you know, as they say, politics isn't beanbag. What about the Occupy Wall Street movement? It is now in its second month. Is President Obama's class-oriented rhetoric responsible for dividing the country and sparking the protests? I think the protesters uh, have a lot of wrong things uh, about them. I'm intrigued by some of the uh, things they advocate as probably not in the realm of reality. But there is something there, and that is that we have seen Wall Street do well. Uh, they've, they've gotten trillions of dollars in bailout money. They have, uh, have making record profits. They have uh, high bonuses for the executives. And meanwhile, on Central Avenue in Phoenix, um, things are terrible. Maricopa County, that's the largest county in Phoenix, most populous county in Arizona, has uh, the highest number of empty homes in America. As I recall, it's 263,000 homes. So you can see why there's anger out there when they see Wall Street doing well in these large firms that we passed legislation, the, the Dodd-Frank Act, that said that they would never be too big to fail. Of course they're too big to fail. They're bigger than they ever were before. So. I understand some of the sympathy and anger, but I can also say that I watch the unions and others uh, exploit this situation, and um, I never support uh, breaking laws. I don't think that that's appropriate in our society, and I would remind you that I never saw the Tea Partiers break laws. Uh, they were always uh, 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 respectful of, of lives and property of others, and. Uh, I, uh, again, maybe it's because of my particular bias. I, if the Tea Partiers had been behaving the way these people had been behaving, I think you would have seen quite a bit more criticism out of the media. Senator McCain, let's switch gears real quickly. You spent more than five years in captivity as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. What do you make of the release this week of the Israeli soldier held captive in Gaza for five years by Hamas in exchange for the release of 1,000 Palestinian prisoners? Well, first of all, I respect the, uh, the decision made by the Israeli government. It's a democratic government, uh, freely elected by the people. I'm also grateful that uh, this young man was able to come home. I've I met a couple of times with his family when I was in Jerusalem. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I respectfully say that I think you have to be concerned about the next time that an Israeli member of the military is taken captive, what kind of price that the enemy will exact. Uh, that is not, uh, the policy that they have pursued has not been the policy of the United States of America. Uh, but after saying that, freely elected government, if the people of Israel don't like it, they can voice their displeasure to the government. Uh, but I, I happen to personally think uh, that it could be a dangerous uh, policy to pursue. Senator, this past weekend you told Candy Crowley that Obama's policy on Iran has been a failure, that engagement hasn't worked, that we need to get tough with the Chinese and the Russians and impose even tougher sanctions. But you also stated that as president, covert actions should be considered. Can you explain what those covert actions should involve as they relate to Iran? Well, first of all, could I say that I uh, remember when President Obama came to office, he was going to, quote, engage the, in his words, the Islamic Republic of Iran. And when the demonstrators were in the streets after a corrupt election in early 2009, chanting, Obama, Obama, are you with us or with, are you with them? He refused to do so. He refused 
to support them, saying he didn't want to jeopardize his chances to negotiate with the Iranians. Uh, clearly that policy has failed and failed miserably. The president needs to tell the American people the extent of Iranian mischief and threats that the Iranians pose to our national security. Number one, obviously nuclear weapons as they continue on the path to acquiring those. They have been responsible for the deaths of young Americans in Iraq by exporting the most lethal copper-tipped IEDs into Iraq. They are fomenting uh, a great unrest uh, in Bahrain. They are playing in Afghanistan. They support terrorist organizations such as Hezbollah and Hamas. So let's, and, and there are many other activities. And although ham-fisted, this last assassination attempt is another manifestation of their view that we must be fairly weak. And so I think we need to get tough on them. We need to get the uh, uh, sanctions on their bank so that anybody who does business with their bank cannot do business with the United States of America. Uh, uh, Russia and China have been deplorable in their behavior as far as failure to support us in uh, enacting sanctions on that country. That should have on, on Iran. There should be consequences for that in our relationship with those two countries. And there are other, there are other, now as far as covert activities, I don't know any covert activities, but I know that we are a very powerful nation and I know that there are options that we have that um, possibly could, um, could be employed. Uh, but for me to state what kind of covert activities there are, one, I'm not privy to those, and second of all, it would be pure speculation. Should the military option remain on the table? Um, you know, when I say that, then it, it causes a great stir. Uh, you know, that I would favor a military option. I think that it could be put in these terms, though that the Iranians are inexorably on the path to acquiring nuclear weapons. If they have those weapons and the ability, which they would have then, to give one of those nuclear weapons to a terrorist organization, that could pose a direct threat to the security of the United States. And we have to consider that when we look at our relationship and our actions or reactions to Iranian absolutely unacceptable uh, behavior outside the norms of the, the accepted behavior of nations in the world. Okay, let's switch gears and chat a bit about 2012. Senator, do you have any takeaways from the GOP presidential debate last night in Las Vegas? It sounds like the party's getting rough. <laughs> I, I, uh, I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is that if you have a whole lot of debates after a while, comedy sort of, C-O-M-I-T-Y, not C-O-M-E-D-Y, uh, comedy sort of breaks down a bit. And, you know, you've got to be very careful when you're up there, when you're frustrated by the verbal attacks of the others on the stage that you don't blow your cool. You've always got to maintain um, a, a level, uh, a steady strain. But uh, I think it's good for America. I think it's good for the party. I noticed that viewers are way, way up as compared with uh, 2008. But I'm not sure how many <laughs> of these debates we need. Remember, we only have three presidential debates and one vice presidential debate. And that seems to be suitable to the American people. But every organization, every Republican organization in America that I know of, every media outlet in America wants to, quote, host a debate. Uh, we were faced with that in 2008. I, th I think maybe there ought to be some limit to them. Now, Herman Cain continues surging in the polls. Do you think that this surge can continue? And is it time for the GOP establishment to embrace Herman Cain? Well, I, I, I respect the campaign that he's run. I think he has certainly uh, proved to be an attractive figure in, on the stage and the debates and other areas. Uh, but, you know, I really am not in the, in the business of critiquing people's uh, performance uh, in these debates. But I do think that it's been healthy. I think that all the candidates that I've watched have, have performed well. and. Uh, um, it's provided uh, 
quite a bit of not only uh, uh, information, but a bit of entertainment for the viewers, which I think accounts for the fairly large viewership. What do you make of his 999 tax plan? Is this something you would support? I worry about tax increases on anybody, but look, um, I think it deserves scrutiny and I think it deserves people's um, examination and I'll let people make up their own minds. Well, a number of pundits are saying that Mitt Romney will indeed win the GOP nomination. Is he a shoe in and is he, in your view, really a conservative as he claims? Listen, one thing I can assure you of, there's a lot of ups and downs between now and when we choose the nominee. I would like to remind you that in 2007, at this particular time, McCain's name wasn't even on the list of contenders. So a lot of things can happen. There can be a lot of surprises and twists and turns, and that's how it should be. And watch the voters of New Hampshire. They're always very, very, very late in making up their minds. They've got to meet the candidate two or three times before they decide. Senator McCain, last question real quickly. There is still room for more candidates. Would Mrs. McCain let you consider another presidential bid? Or barring that, what about VP? Um, I think that um, it has once been said that the vice president only has two duties. One is to preside over the Senate and cast the vote in case of a tie vote in the United States Senate. And the other duty is to inquire daily as to the health of the president. So. Uh, I find my duties here in the Senate most engrossing, exciting, and interesting, and I'm very honored to represent the people of Arizona. Um, I think that um, if I uh, had, would consider coming back into the race, that it would not only disrupt uh, my entire family life, but also, I think, lose me a lot of friends. So I'm very happy and content in the United States Senate, and I am confident, I am confident, seriously, that the candidate we select will be, the, be sworn in as President of the United States in January of 2013. You're confident Barack Obama will be a one-term president? I am confident. All right, Senator John McCain, thank you so much for joining us on Newsmax TV. It's always an honor to have you on, and thank you so much for your service to our country. Thank you for having me on. I love Newsmax.